Hi third graders, my name is Shelby. Thank you so much for being at school today. Um, so we can read our book together and learn a little bit about the career choice that we have for our book. Um, our topic is careers. Um, and then our book is called A Dinosaur Named Sue. So we're gonna learn about paleontologists and fossil hunters. Um, but first I just wanna tell you about the career choice that I wanted when I, I, what I wanted to be when I grew up when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I really wanted to be an actress. I wanted to be on TV, in movies. Um, that is not what I want to be now. Um, now I'm going to school to be a child life specialist, um, which is somebody who works in hospitals with kids. Um, I would make them feel more comfortable because the hospital can be a kind of scary place. So that's what I'm doing now. So before we read our book, um, if your teacher could pause the video at this moment, and if someone knows any, any fun facts about paleontologists or um, fossil hunters, f please feel free to share with the class, and please unpause when you are finished sharing. Thank you. Okay, well thank you um, for sharing. We will go ahead and get into our book. I am going to read the first two chapters today and the foreword, um, and then the rest you can read on your own. You will get a copy of the book that you can take home. It is yours to keep. Um, so you can finish reading the rest of the book with somebody in your house or a friend. So first we have the foreword, um, A Strange Day. There is a place in North America where rolling hills and tumbling cliffs cover the land. In the summer, temperatures soar to over 100 degrees. Dry, dusty winds blow. In this place, western South Dakota, Susan Hendrickson camped out with her dog, Gypsy. It was the summer of 1990. Susan had, had been living out of a tent for six weeks. Every day, she worked outside in the blazing sun. Why would anyone choose to do that? Susan is a fossil hunter. South Dakota is one of the best places in the world to find fossils such as dinosaur bones. Susan was with a group of fossil hunters from a company called the Black Hills Institute. The group had spent most of that summer digging up a duck-billed dinosaur called Edmontosaurus. Summer was almost over. Everyone was tired and ready to go home. Within just two days, with just two days left, the group woke up to a thick fog. They could hardly see. The air was cool and still. There is never fog in South Dakota in the summertime. It was such a strange day, Susan recalls. This unusual day ended up being more amazing than anyone could have imagined. Chapter 1. The Discovery It all began with the flat tire. The tire on the group's truck had to be fixed. There is no getting around this rugged area of South Dakota without good tires in your truck. Susan decided to stay behind while the others went to town to get a new tire. She was thinking about the, the cliffs across the valley. The group had carefully searched most of the area, but not all of it. There was one little place I really wanted to go, but there had been no time. We had been so busy, Susan remembers. This was her chance. Susan and Gypsy set off to the rocky area. They hiked seven miles for more than two hours through the thick fog. We have a picture of Susan right there. By the time they got there, the, the fog had burnt away. Susan did what fossil hunters always do when searching cliffs. She walked around the bottom first. She looked for bones that might have fallen downhill. She watched for the dull brown color of fossil bones among the gray rocks. After 15 minutes, she hadn't found anything. Then, Susan says, all of a sudden, I saw a couple of two-inch pieces of bone and a bunch of little broken bone pieces. She looked up to see where the bones had come from. Eight feet above, more bones jolted off the cliff. Susan climbed up for a closer look. She saw three huge backbones, a rib bone, and a leg bone. Because the broken edges of the bones were sticking straight out of the cliff, Susan could tell there were more, there were more bones inside. I had never found more than, more than small parts of T-Rex before. Some teeth and a couple of small pieces of bone. So I was really excited, Susan recalls. Susan looked closely at the bones. They were hollow. Dinosaurs that ate meat, called carnivores, had hollow bones. Plant-eating dinosaurs called herbivores didn't, so this was a carnivore, and the, these bones were huge. I knew the only carnivorous dinosaur that lived in the area was the Tyrannosaurus rex, says Susan, and I thought, wow. 
At that time, only parts of 11 other Tyrannosaurus rex skeletons had ever been found. Susan picked up two pieces of bone. She hurried back with Gypsy at her heels. She showed the others and told them what she had seen. They all agreed. There was a T-Rex buried in those hills. They decided to name the dinosaur Sue in honor of its, dis of its discoverer. Almost 30 feet of rock on top of the skeleton had to be cleared away before all of Sue's bones could be uncovered. But some of the people in the group had to go home. That left only three or four people to do the enormous, the enormous job. Using shovels, picks, and crowbars, the group got to work. From dawn to dusk, 13 hours a day, they chipped and dug and broke away the cliff. They pushed 100-pound pieces of rock down the hill with their hands. The temperatures rose above 120 degrees. The diggers were exhausted, but the excitement of what they hoped to find drove them on. Soon, the jumble of Sue's bones was exposed. The group quickly realized how unbelievable this Tyrannosaurus rex was. Almost all the bones were there. Most dinosaur, dinosaur skeletons that are found are missing many, if not most, of their bones. The creature's skull was the size of a refrigerator. Most of the teeth were set in its jaw, some 12 inches or longer from the root to tooth tip. Its right front arm was there, only one of the only two T-Rex two T -rex arms ever discovered. 36 tailbones circled around the remains, one of the most complete T-Rex tails ever found. Often, fossil bones are chipped or broken apart. Sue's bones were nearly perfect. To top it off, Sue was huge. It was really amazing, says Susan Hendrickson. She just kept getting bigger and better. We were all in such shock. You can't ever dream of finding something so good and so big. This was the find of a lifetime, the largest and most complete T-Rex ever discovered. Chapter 2, T-Rex, What's the Story? A man named Barnum Brown found the first Tyrannosaurus rex fossils in 1900. He brought the bones to his boss, Henry Osborne of the American Museum of Natural History. When Mr. Osborne saw the huge jaws and dagger-like teeth, he knew this was one of the most powerful, he knew this was, was one powerful dinosaur. He named the species Tyrannosaurus rex, which means Tyrant Lizard King. A tyrant is a mean, powerful leader. Over time, Tyrannosaurus rex has been taken on the nickname T-Rex. T-Rex stood about 40 feet long and 13 feet high at the hips. That's bigger than a city bus. Scientists think that a T-Rex may have weighed anywhere from 2 to 7 tons. Its head alone might have weighed one ton. One ton is 2,000 pounds, about what a small rhinoceros weighs. T-Rex walked with its huge head forward. Its heavy tail held off the ground, helped keep its balance. The arms of a T-Rex were only as long as an adult human's arms, but they were very, very strong. The jaws of a T-Rex flash as many as 58 teeth. It had the longest teeth of any known dinosaur. Up to five inches of tooth showed, from jaw to pointy tip, including the roots. Some teeth were longer than 12 inches. T-Rex's teeth fell out and new ones grow, grew back throughout its life. Tyrannosaurus rex is a species of North American dinosaur. As of 1998, 22 specimens have been found, all in Canada or the western United States. Sue has more of her bones preserved than any other T-Rex skeletons. The dinosaurs you see in museums have many bones made of plaster. Sometimes museums use parts or of two or more T-Rex skeletons to make one whole skeleton. Sue is 90% complete. Most of the other T-Rex skeletons are less than half complete. Here is one way to understand. If you have a 10-piece puzzle, but half the pieces are missing, five of them. Could you put the puzzle together? Could you tell what your finished puzzle would look like? Next, imagine you have 9 out of 10 pieces. You could probably put the puzzle together and you'd have a good idea of what the finished puzzle would look like. Now think of the puzzle pieces as, di as dinosaur bones. 
With so many nearly perfect bones to study, scientists have the chance to learn more than about more than ever about the species of T-Rex, and they have a chance to learn something about the life of one T-Rex, Sue. Okay, and then here's chapter three, and then you'll be able to read the rest on your own when you get the copy of the book. So we, this book talks about paleontologists and fossil hunters. Um, so give me a big thumbs up if you think that a paleontologist or a fossil hunter would be a job that you would want to have. A uh, side thumb if you're not so sure, and a thumbs down if you definitely know that you do not want to be a paleontologist or a fossil hunter. So go ahead and give me your thumbs. Okay, thank you so much. So to be a fossil hunter or a paleontologist, um, you'd have to really like science and math, and then you'd have to study a lot of science in college. Um, and then they do have like graduate programs in paleontology, um, and that's how you'd become a paleontologist. Fossil hunters also have to study um, dinosaurs and paleontology a lot too as well. They also have to like math and science too. Um, so if we could pause the video at this moment, and if everybody could go around and share um, what they want to be when they grow up, please, and then unpause the video when you're done, please. Okay, thank you for sharing. I'm sure you all have some great career goals, and I'm sure you guys can all accomplish those someday. Um, with a lot of hard work, you can definitely accomplish those goals. So thank you again, third graders, for being at school and for reading our book with me um, and for learning about, paleontolo learning about paleontologists a little more. I hope that you enjoy the rest of the book um, when, if you, when you get it and when you have a chance to read it. Have a great day. Thank you.